welcome back. Today we're discussing some dimensioning for the first time. We're going to be going over some rules that are very important that you have to follow when you're dimensioning an object. When we say dimensioning, we mean putting sizes, uh, lengths, widths, heights on our drawings, basically our multi-views. The first one is dimension should reflect the actual size of the object, not the scaled size. Now, this is not difficult. This basically means that uh, we don't want to measure it after we've drawn it and say how big it is. We want to measure it before we draw it. And no matter what size we draw it, we want to put down the actual size. All right. So again, you should reflect the actual size, not the scaled size of the assignment or of the object. Include overall dimensions in the three principal directions, width, height, and depth. Uh, man, I can't tell you how many times this is key. <clears throat> I want you to notice right here, they're giving you two dimensions, and if you were to add those together, yeah, you would know it's 1.5, but you don't want your reader to have to, to, have to uh, add things together to know the length, the overall height of an object, or the overall length of an object. All right, so these are incorrect methods. These right here are the correct methods. Notice they have it being one inch <coughs> and 0.5. Uh, here they've given you the overall length here being two inches. All right, so they're not leaving anything up uh, for imagination. They're telling you. Include all dimensions necessary to produce or inspect the part. This is where those lines that I've been trying to get you guys to draw become important. <clears throat> and what you do here is you're basically going to start from the bottom. And you're going to slowly work your way up. All right, I've got a line here, so I need to have it dimensioned. All right, I've got a line here. It's either left side or right side. I need to have it dimensioned. Here's a, a line. I need to have it dimensioned. The same thing over here on the left side. All right. Do I have it dimensioned? Do I have it dimensioned? So now I've done my horizontal. Now I need to go through and do my vertical. All right. I've got this line and this line and this line and this line and then this line and this line. <coughs> Notice that this is an incorrect example. This is a correct example. All right. Here at the bottom now we've got 0.75. They've given this dimension and they've given this dimension. So everything is dimensioned right now. Rule number four, do not include unnecessary dimensions. Well, that means we don't want to have duplicates. As I was talking about these lines, I'm putting these lines in here again. This is this. So we don't need to have it dimensioned twice. This height is the same as this height over here. So that height is this height. We don't need to have one inch on there twice. Likewise, this, because of our 45, this comes over here and down. So this is this. We don't need to have those duplicates. Uh, and that's what they're saying here as well. <laughs> More examples of unnecessary dimensions. Um, this is correct to say one inch, but it would be incorrect to say 0.5 and 0.5. We can t simply take the fact that it's one inch minus the 0.5 and realize that that has to be 0.5. This is just an extra dimension that's unnecessary. Likewise here, this is 0 0.75, 0 0.75, that's 1.5. We know that it's overall two inches. We don't need you to tell us that this one here is 0.5 inches. All right. So this would be the correct way to dimension this one. Okay, dimension should be attached to the view that best shows the contour of the feature to be dimensioned. Basically what this comes down to then is uh, you really want to put as many views and, and this isn't, this is a general rule. The front view is going to give us the best contour. So where should most of our um, dimensions go? It should go on the front view. And now not everything, but <clears throat> most, of, most of them should go in the front view. We have contours. We have shape here, different shapes. Here we just have a rectangle and a bunch of rectangles. So we're not getting a whole lot of idea of what this really looks like from looking at it from the top. 
This is the correct way to do it. Right? Notice they put it on the bottom. A dimension should be attached to only one view. For example, extension lines should not connect two views. Uh, I don't think I've ever had students do this where they connect from a top view and a front view and try to use those as their extension lines. I'm going to assume because they're bringing it up that students have tried doing this in the past, but this usually isn't a problem. You would dimension it to only one side and realize that dimensioning it to one side works for both, if that makes sense. I would bring my extension line from here and not over here. Number seven, whenever possible, lake, locate dimensions between adjacent views. Well, what you're seeing here is they've got all these dimensions over here to the left side. And what they're saying is they'd like to see as many of these dimensions be brought over here, in between, in between. And then this right here, anything in here, because this is between these two views because of that 45, they like to see it in these three areas, it actually be in this area and that area, not necessarily that area. So we don't want to be here. We don't want to be here. We don't want to be there. And we don't want to be here or there. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't ever have any, all right? But as it says, whenever possible, this is the correct way that this one should be dimensioned. Avoid dimensioning to hidden lines, all right? So sometimes we have to, but a lot of times you can find a way to do it without dimensioning to a hidden line. So they've got this hidden line here, and they've dimensioned to it so that we can say how tall this is. Well, we don't want to do that, all right? Over here would be a much better way because it's now we're avoiding this. We're not going to a hidden line. And this is a much better way. But some of you are saying, Mr. Kimmel, we said we're supposed to avoid putting it outside. It's a guideline, not every single time. We would rather have you dimension on the outside here than dimension to a hidden line. A hidden line doesn't give us very good features, so we want to stay away from hidden lines. And here's an example of it being done correctly. Rule number nine, do not place dimensions on the object unless it is absolutely necessary. Um, sometimes it is, but usually it's not. So we want to avoid all of this. Don't put them on the inside. A lot of students like to do that because then they think it looks cleaner on the outside. Put them on the outside. Again, here would be the correct way to do this. They've moved the one inch from being inside, which it was here. They've taken it out there. And then the two inch, which they had going here, they moved it up there. And it's much cleaner drawing. Do not cross a dimension line with another dimension line or with an extension line. So what you're seeing here is, notice how they have the 0.5 and the 1, they're intersecting each other. The 1 and the 2 inch, they're intersecting each other. Uh, what you're going to simply see them do is they're going to move this one in and move that one out. They're going to move that one down, move this one up, and now it looks a lot cleaner. Okay, leader lines point towards the center of the feature and should not occur horizontally or vertically. So here's a good example. This is a bad example over here. We would not want to do this because this kind of looks like an object line. Is this part of the part or not? And I think this is pretty obvious that this is not part of the part, but this can be confusing. Dimension numbers should be centered between the arrowheads, except when using stack dimensions, and then the numbers should be staggered. Uh, here, they've shown you that these are in a straight line, and it's kind of hard to read that way. And that's the reason why we're, we don't want them in a straight line. Um, if it's going to be hard to read, right? Here's an example of where they're not necessarily centered, and the reason they're not centered is it's a lot easier to read this way. In general, a circle is dimensioned by its diameter and an arc by its radius. So you see here, they're dimensioning. This is the symbol for diameter, which we've talked about, and they're going to the circle. And then this is a radius and they're putting an R for the radius. Holes should be located in size in the view that shows the feature as a circle. So this is a bad example here. They're trying to show you where the hole is, si is si where its location is. Here they're trying to show you its location, and then here they're trying to show you the, the diameter of it. 
I can't tell if this is even a hole from this view. If I were to get rid of the front view, this might be a, a square that's there in the middle. And you'd get this exact same view here. All right. This is the correct way to do this. Notice they've got one inch. They're locating it here now. They've told you the diameter. All right. When it comes to location, it takes two. All right. For location, it's going to take two dimensions. All right. It takes two dimensions. Notice here's one that tells us where it's at left and right and the other one that tells us up and down. That's a problem for students when it comes to holes. Okay, holes are located by their center lines. We want to include these center lines so that you know exactly where to put that drill bit. All right, a hole's gonna be made by a drill bit, so we gotta know where to put that. Well, there are 16 dimensioning standards. Um, they're more like guidelines than rules because sometimes we have to break one to not break another, uh, but I hope this is beneficial for you guys. I'll catch you on the flip side.